Hello, and welcome to the Shafts of Land Trust annual Wildways fundraiser kickoff. My name is Paul Vienno, Executive Director of the Shasta Land Trust, and you're joining us virtually uh, at home, on your couch, hopefully having an amazing meal. I'm standing out at Daniel Beaver Banks Reserve, the home of the Shasta Land Trust. Today, we hope to have a conversation with you about how valuable local land conservation is to Shasta County and all of our homes. We plan on having some amazing conversations with a local rancher, the family that made all of this home office possible, and some really special conversations with our board members. To give you a little brief history of what the Wildways program is, it's been in place since 1998. Kathleen Gilman founded the Shasta Land Trust at her home, and since then we protected over 24,000 beautiful acres across Shasta County. The kickoff is hosted by our volunteers, which is what makes it so very special. While you'll see staff at many of the events and the kickoff, all the events are hosted and paid for by our volunteers. I can't stress enough how vital that is to what makes the Shasta Land Trust Wildaway series of events so very special. This year, we have 10 events planned. Hopefully next year we'll have very many more, and this year we hope to have on some men at the end of the year. We're joining you virtually today because COVID guidelines have required us to do so. COVID has played quite a role in changing how we've engaged with our community this past year, and we expect it will continue to do so for the weeks and months to come. We hope all of you are staying safe with your families at home, we're doing that here, and we're working safely at the Shasta Land Trust to make sure the conservation continues in the best manner possible. Over the next weeks and months, the events we have planned are set in place with COVID guidelines taken into consideration to make sure that both our hosts, our volunteers, and our staff stay safe while we celebrate what makes conservation so special. On a personal note, Shasta County is my hometown. I was born and raised here. My wife and I made our home here. And we did that because we think Shasta County is special. And that's what makes Wildways so special. That's what makes the Shasta Land Trust so special. We protect the places we love. You protect the places you love. I know so many of you. I see you on the weekends hiking and kayaking and taking in what makes the North State so special. That's what Wildways is about. We make sure the money you gave given us today for this ticket goes directly back to making sure the conservation efforts are heightened. We have a busy year ahead of us, and we're only able to do this because of you. While today you purchase tickets to the Wildways kickoff event, and hopefully you buy many tickets for our future events and take place in our silent auction, there are so many other ways for you to give. If you feel inclined, go to our website today, click donate, and give whatever you feel necessary. Conservation efforts are not slowing down. The effects of conservation can be seen now across the Fall River Valley, Hat Creek, and Pitt River and now locally on the Cow Creek by Watershed. We believe in what we do, and you believe in what we do. And through that, we're able to conserve the lands that we all like to enjoy every single day. Throughout the rest of the presentation that you're gonna be watching this evening, you're gonna be hearing some amazing stories, uh, both serious and excited about the future for conservation. But next, you're gonna hear from the Buckhorn Mountain Stompers. For some of you, you know them very well. For others, it'll be your first experience listening to the magic that they provide through their instruments. They donated this amazing customized video for the Shasta Land Trust, and I cannot express how excited we are. It is funky, it is fresh, it is a direct representation of what conservation means. It showcases all that we believe in, and we couldn't be more excited to have them as part of our Wild Waste kickoff. So please stand up, get excited, Buckhorn Mountain Stompers. Hey man! Hey! Woo!
We like frogs, we like bees, we like trout swimming in creeks when we ride out of town. We like black cap chickadees, we like mountains full of trees with only our friends around. This is what we wanna do, we wanna go Dance with you and all the freaky animals too Lizards and banana slugs and listening to the songbirds sing. We like to see a kibu sky filled up with the wings of butterflies and furry, feathery, scaly things. This is what we want to do. We want to go. Dance with you and all the freaky animals too. Giant oak trees laughed when a furry fella came my way. He was a grass eating horse. He asked the sand. We said, Of course, we choose nature over money any day. This is what we want to do. We want to go. Dance with you and all the freaky animals too. As of now, you've had a chance to learn a little bit about Wildways is and what Wildways means to the Shasta Land Trust. You've had a chance to also enjoy some great music by the Buckhorn Mountain Stompers and hopefully had a great meal along the way. Next, I want to introduce to you the Shasta Land Trust Board of Directors. They comprise an amazing array of both education, diversity, and skill sets that really shape what the Land Trust is and what the Shasta Land Trust will be in the future. So without ado, the Shasta Landers Board of Directors are going to tell you a little bit about what conservation means to them. So for me, conservation is something that's integral to every part of my life. I work um, in my full-time job in conservation, and I also own a farm here. So conservation is at the core of what I do every single day. Conservation is preserving and 
and protecting this amazing environment that we have in the North State. And it's ensuring that uh, the wonderful things we see and experience will be there for, for us, for our children, for our grandchildren, and far off into the future. Well, conservation for me, in the context of the Shasta Land Trust, is the preserving of these um, unique landscapes that we have in uh, the Northern California area, whether it be the Fall River or down here in the Oak Woodland area. And it also is to, for me, is preserving the land for its wise use and management. To me, conservation means the protection and the preservation of our natural environment for future generations. Uh, conservation is important to me just for making sure that you have lands that are there for future generations. Also, I think it have, conserving these lands could have a big impact in uh, dealing with climate change, and that seems to be one of our major problems of our present times. Conservation is thriving wildlife populations, healthy ecosystems, abundant open space, thriving rural communities, and secure, sustainable food production systems. And actually, I think there's there's several different areas or, or disciplines in conservation. You know, one is, of course, saving the bugs and the critters and the plants and trees and stuff. But the other, in terms of our land trust and, and what my primary interest is, is in preserving the farmland where it, where it makes sense from a land use standpoint and from a practical standpoint. When I, um, when I think of conservation, I think of a story that my son, my seven-year-old son said um, not too long ago. We were sitting in our backyard um, of our house and we live on a half acre lot, so um, there are houses all around us, but he was looking through the fence and he said, at one point, all of these pieces of property, all, you know, all of this used to be one. And I was like, Yes, it, yes, it used to be uh, one piece. And so when I think of conservation, I think of that. I think of keeping um, lands and places that we love intact uh, for those future generations. I know that there's just a lot that needs to be protected and joining the board was the way that I got to have a hand in doing that. I've been privileged to be a, a board member of Shasta Land Trust for many years now, and I think it's, it's an opportunity to, to work with amazing people and to do great work and to kind of be in a community of folks that, that are generally like-minded, uh, who bring so much to the table and, and really let us get out there and, and implement our mission of saving important land in Northern California. I've been around the Shasta Land Trust for oh, close to 10, year, 10 or more years at this point. Been involved in the wild waste parties. Um, I've been a part of uh, planning wild waste parties and actually uh, being hosts for wild waste parties. And so um, at one point there was a position on the board that came open and so that drew my interest toward the Shasta Land Trust. When I think about being on the Shasta Land Trust board, um, I think of how far we've come. Um, I joined the board six years ago, and in that span of time, we have just grown by leaps and bounds, and um, it's been a very rewarding experience to uh, sit on this board and help kind of direct its, its strategy and, and inform uh, the direction it's going. The Land Trust utilizes the uh, private property rights of owners to choose to be able to preserve their land in perpetuity, not subject to political whims. In terms of our land trust, our, our primary goal is to uh, preserve the landscape. Uh, we feel that there's a need and an opportunity. There's certainly an interest in uh, preserving the productive farmland in California. The Lillian Nelson Nature Preserve was the first conservation easement protected by the Shasta Land Trust in the city of Reading. And during the process of putting our land in the conservation easement, I realized that I need to make it clear to other landowners that have a similar vision that if they are interested in preserving their land for the future, 
it's really possible to do that. In California, over 60% of the oak woodlands are privately owned. And these privately owned oak woodlands are home to over 300 wildlife species, help to capture and filter our surface waters, serve as huge carbon reservoirs, and also provide food and fiber for various communities. The landowners of these properties serve as stewards over these landscapes and over these ecosystem functions from which we all benefit. The North State is where I was born and raised, and so to me it's very important that the feeling and the, the support that you get from being able to get into nature so quickly is available to everyone, certainly available to generations of North State folks to come. The Shasta Land Trust is a local land trust, and that was important to me to preserve the areas here in Shasta County in uh, Northern California, where I grew up. I was born and raised here, grew up not far from the land trust office here in Churn Creek Bottom. And I have uh, always been drawn back to this part of the United States. And one of the things I queue to is Mount Shasta. I see it when I fly back from international flights. I look out the window and I see it glowing white down there. I wake up in the morning, I look out. As somewhere during my day, I look up and I see Mount Shasta, look over to the east and see Lassen. And these are just really important parts of centering my life. We've been doing such amazing things and going from uh, this grassroots organization to really a, a model of success in land trusts in the Western United States and Northern California specifically um, is just really amazing. So as a board member for Shasta Land Trust, I know that I've taken on some responsibility and that feels like something I needed to do. I wanted to know that I was pushing forward our efforts to conserve important lands, important resources, and that we were moving forward, that we weren't going to be stagnant. I feel very strongly that my place in the North State is to you know, acknowledge the people whose lands we now steward and do a good job of stewarding them into the future. To me, that includes more lands being conserved. At the bottom line, conservation is a necessity. Thriving wildlife and human communities in the future depend on our conservation actions today. And next, I want to introduce to you some very special guests we have here today. We have Suzanne and Jennifer, which are Dr. Daniel's daughters, and we have Richard, who is Suzanne's husband. For many of you, you may already know the history, but for some who don't, I'm standing out at the beautiful Daniel Beaver Banks Preserve, the home of the Shasta Land Trust. Way back in December of 2019, the staff of the Land Trust sat down with the entire Daniel family and had a real conversation about what it could mean to turn a Daniel residence into the future home of the Shasta Land Trust. What it could mean for you, what it could mean for the community, and what it could mean for educational opportunities that this property could have long into the future. We hope in the coming months that a conservation easement will be placed on this property and that will be really exciting for all of us in Shasta County. So without ado, I want to introduce to you the Daniel family. It meant so much to the Shasta Land Trust for what they made possible. And I'm really excited for you to hear a little bit about them and their story. Trust expressed an interest in this as um, uh, a new uh, home and a base for the, the programs that that they support. Um, it was thrilling to the family. We, as a family, have dearly loved this property. It's been a sanctuary. Um, it has allowed my folks who were busy people for a variety of reasons to spend a lot of time out of doors even when they needed to be um, uh, close to town and um, in my dad's case close to work. The goals of the land trust 
are so consistent with my parents' desires for both the future of the property, but also um, nurturing goals that they saw as priority for the region. The overriding theme, if there is a single theme in the Daniel family, and that is a theme of education. Education is key to the preservation of the planet and us as a species. However, uh, I think that one of the beauties of what uh, Harry uh, and the Daniel family have been able to accomplish with <clears throat> creating the Daniel Beaver Banks Preserve is an opportunity to educate not only the public in general, but uh, the idea that the possibilities for education here on this property uh, with uh, interns and the community at large. This, I, I just have this vision that I think we could, you could have uh, busloads of children coming down here and walking through a native plant garden and learning to appreciate and identify so that when it's their turn to go out into the forest, when it's their turn to go out uh, into the field in general uh, and see these wild places and preserved places, they'll say, oh, that's a bluebell, that's a glacier lily, that's a oak tree, that's a whatever it may be. And therein, I think, is the promise of the Daniel legacy and it's the promise of um, this organization. Our folks were doers. They were, community was really important. Um, and being forward looking um, was also very important to both of them. Um, and, and they worked hard at making their communities and really the world, world at large a better place. Um, contributing was really, really important to them. And so, for me, that legacy, that um, uh, intent, um, um, kind of carries on their presence here. Uh, and that's, that's what the Land Trust represents. So it's jo not just another place on a pretty li river, in a gorgeous part of California, it's it's um, a working entity that is protecting um, um, parcels all through Northern um, California, um, which is an area that is really important to um, to my parents and to the family as a whole. And additionally, the land trust reaches out across boundaries which um, um, really resonated, would have resonated with my mother if she was still alive, definitely resonated with my dad. Uh, working with the tribe, working with a lot of people from different walks of life towards a common goal, which is really important for conservation in the area. And that is a dream come true for us. If you don't pay attention, the things um, that are finite um, in um, quantity as um, the area grows. Uh, once they're lost, they're not, um, y you can't uh, reclaim them. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing the memories of the Daniel family as much as I always do. From living out here in the 1960s to now watching it transform into the home of the Shasta Land Trust, they are so excited for what the future can bring. Next, I'm really excited to announce to you Jim Ray Ricker, owner of Prey the Ranch Beef and fourth generation cattle ranchers in Shasta County. They truly have a unique opinion as to what conservation means to them and what conservation means to 
the beautiful lands we have here in Northern California. So without ado, Jim and Mary Rickert. Uh, well, I believe that Shasta County is one of the more unique places to live, and it's been a great opportunity for myself and my family to uh, work and participate in the community here in, in uh, Shasta County. Uh, the county is uh, real unique in California in that it has the, the high elevation areas that, you know, we go, we go all the way from the Mediterranean climate to an alpine climate all in one location. We have all the rivers and the lakes and everything. So it is, it's really been a unique opportunity and a, and a great place to live. As far as looking to the uh, future, there's so much of California that's been changed and, and urbanized that it's nice to have a certain parts of it that can be preserved and taken care of. And, and let at least the, the public know about areas that can be uh, in the natural state. The conservation easements really give us that uh, vehicle to be able to promote and to educate um, the a rural kind of lifestyle and the, the ability to educate children. So, and, and nature is such a big part of um, that healthy balance for, for mental health. And so that's really, really important that kids have the opportunity to learn about birds and fish and um, grass and wildflowers and that kind of thing. And, and it's, it's so important, especially in this day and age with social media and technology and kids are so connected hours sometimes every day to uh, their devices and so to give them the opportunity to get outside and to really um, be healed by nature is really important. An opportunity to, be, to participate in conservation easements is very important to me and to Mary mm -hmm. uh, as we uh, uh, as we started with one of the in fact I think it was the, the first large conservation easement uh, on our Fenwood Ranch in Anderson area. It's it's a chance for our uh, children, our grandchildren, and hopefully other people in the future to enjoy and to see open space and the, the benefits of nature and the, the, that sort of thing. And we just had the opportunity to have grandchildren with us over Easter vacation, and we were out stacking brush, and uh, the oldest grandson was on the tractor using um, the grapple. We were picking up you know, dead limbs that had fallen during the snowmageddon experience so we're still trying to do some cleanup with that and so we can reduce the fire hazard on the property well and i had an interesting experience when we were doing that i started building a uh, a brush pile uh, yes. which was all these limbs and everything and i've had this had the tractor and i was getting these big limbs and i was stacking them all up there and i was about two-thirds of the way done and here was a a male quail showed up in the middle of it and was already claiming territory there because they've just taken over these brush piles. Yes. So it was interesting to see that I wasn't even done with it yet and he'd come over to check it out. Yes. You know, so you kind of work with nature at, that rather than trying to force nature to bend your will. We're really just stewards of the land. You know, our, our time here on earth is, is to basically protect and enhance the properties that we're connected with. And so that's really important to us that that we uh, pass down that legacy to them and that they understand that, that they are the next generation of stewards. Yeah. I also think that, that local food systems are important. I think we found out in the pandemic that some of these big complex uh, food delivery systems uh, were somewhat fragile and, didn't, and, and broke. That's right. uh, and so basically societies in history have failed because they lost control of producing their own food. And so I, I really feel that, that we have an opportunity by preserving this land and dedicating it to agricultural activities, we can, we can actually create these local food systems that are more resilient and, uh, and more proactive uh, contribution. And I think we need to preserve the land for agricultural production as well. And there, we can do it by having a light footprint. Uh, a lot of the properties that we manage and that we uh, have conservation easements on, one of the things that is a big advantage to all this is they were oftentimes slated for development. And that meant that, that if, as you were waiting for the, the big bucks to be getting from selling the, it, it, the housing tract, the agricultural activities were just extracted. You didn't go out and, and take uh, 
the time to take the long-term approach. You didn't put up a new fence. You didn't put, add, add a livestock watering area. You didn't do, say in the case of grazing land, you didn't do a lot of things out there because it was gonna be paved over, cut into small lots, and it didn't make any sense. Now, with, a, with permanently we're gonna be in agriculture, we are building the fences. We are putting in the stock water. We're uh, planting uh, different types of range plants that will actually sequester carbon and actually be more nutritious for the cattle. All of those are long-term projects. They're not short-term. I mean, we, Mary and I have 10-year, 20-year, 30-year, and 40-year plans. Uh, the likelihood that I, in my 70s, I'm gonna be here for to realize the 40-year plan is probably not great, but we need to start. All those things take time, and it, and it also, you, I think you have to understand that nature, when you work with nature, it's it's a progression of little steps. It's not one big thing. You can't just assemble something and bang, it's there. You, it takes time to forgive the animals and the environment the opportunity to exhibit the natural behavior it's gonna have anyway. That's a big deal and it's hard and it takes just takes time. I, I, I wish I had another 50 years because I've got more things I want to do. Well, you know, it's real important that we look at the long range vision for Shasta County and what do we want Shasta County to look like in 50 or 100 years. And I think it's really important that we still have the opportunity for working landscapes throughout the county. Again, it's a good education uh, component that we can use for our children, get children out into uh, nature and uh, teach them about wildlife and you can teach them about ranching practices and you can teach them about, uh, about uh, soil, uh, the importance of good quality soil and how to uh, work with your soil. So um, for Shasta County, it's really important that we uh, maintain that uh, tradition because we are uh, and have been an agricultural community, but also be able to continue that and, um, so that we aren't impacted by urban sprawl in some areas and that we're able to preserve um, in incredible resources. Uh, our, our Fenwood Ranch is on the Sacramento River. And the fact we have two and a half miles of protected um, river frontage on that ranch is so important to Gemini and for our uh, future generations. Yeah. We, we kind of joke that we're not the uh, uh, owners of the property, the property kind of owns us. We're just kind of <laughs> part of the, we kind of come with the territory, you know, and we just have this uh, temporary time that, that's uh, uh, to interact with it. And it's, and it's a real privilege and honor. Yeah. I'm standing out here today at the beautiful Ross Ranch owned by the McConnell Foundation, home of the future conservation easement by the Shasta Land Trust. Today you've had a chance to learn about a lot on wild ways, you've heard some, some amazing speakers, and I'm here with our stewardship staff to go ahead and talk about this project along with many, many more. Before we do that, I want to highlight one really amazing thing we're working on. In partnership with the PG&E and the Stewardship Council, we're working with the Pitt River Tribe in the Fall River, Hat Creek, and Pitt River areas to bring back so much of their ancestral land to them. Through conservation easements held by the Shasta Land Trust, the tribe will be able to have on several thousand acres of land the opportunity to practice what they used to do on the lands that used to be their homes. We're so excited to show this to you. Over the next few years, many of these properties will be falling into conservation easement. This year, we have an amazing wild ways hike out on Hat Creek, highlighting that work, and we hope to bring you out for many more events on those properties in the coming years. So today we're out in front of a beautiful pasture on Ross Ranch, and I have Jenna and Delphine with me, and they would love to tell you more about their program and what they're doing to enhance the uh, property. We're part of a program called Grizzly Corps, and it started through the UC Berkeley Center for Law, Energy, and Environment, and it's in a state AmeriCorps program that started in 2020. And we basically are put into farm and forest communities to help with uh, regenerative agriculture and forest fire resiliency. Here at Ross Ranch, we help with general land management, the rotational grazing of the Prather cows, as well as um, managing the Shasta College cows on our Healthy Soils grant through the CDFA program. We um, seeded and irrigate this pasture behind us um, to increase the amount of native perennial grasses on Ross Ranch. This in turn uh, helps with fuel mitigation and wildfire resiliency 
um, throughout the summer months as this pasture will stay more green. Um, we also do uh, fuels reduction programs on this uh, acreage and um, have been working with CAL FIRE to hopefully get some prescribed burns on the land. This pasture behind us, we're doing a soil amendment study with Point Blue Conservation Science. And right now we're taking soil samples of the plots that are going to be part of our study to see what the baseline soil looks like. And then after these initial soil samples are taken, we will be applying four different amendments, compost, biochar, earth fort, and uh, beam, which is um, a new fungal-focused compost. Fungal-focused compost, um, and then a control plot. And so this soil study will um, happen for the next three years um, with these amendments placed on them every single year. Um, and this will give us um, data on how soil amendments change uh, soil conditions and uh, plant growth. Frost Ranch is 863 acres and is very diverse. It has so many things, including grassland um, that will be used, some of it for pasture. Um, there's floodplain, forest, and um, two very large lakes that um, provide excellent fish habitat. And as far as the wildlife habitat goes, um, even today we've seen some really beautiful eagles in their nest um, with their fledglings. So it's really exciting to see um, what a property, per, like a preserved property can do as far as wildlife habitat, as well as being a working uh, branch. So some of you may have heard that um, increasing the pace and scale of land conservation is a theme that's been popping up in the news a lot lately. Um, with the current national goal of being 30% of the U.S. conserved by 2030, 30 by 30, um, we at the Land Trust are working really hard to um, gear up and grab as many projects as we can, get those conserved so that they have a long-lasting impact for future generations. So as part of increasing capacity and just expanding what we can do at the Land Trust, um, we had a super cool addition to our stewardship team in 2020. Um, Deidre Monroe is our current conservation projects manager and she's been working very diligently on um, the projects that I was just discussing through the Sustainable Ag Lands Conservation Program and even with some um, folks who have decided to make a huge impact by donating an easement to us. Um, those conservation easements will be in beautiful areas um, along the Little Tool River in Fall River Mills and also in the Bella Vista area. Hi, I'm Deidre Monroe and I'm the Conservation Projects Manager here at the Shasta Land Trust. I work directly with landowners, helping them conserve their properties for future generations. I also helped write and obtain four Sustainable Agricultural Lands Conservation Program grants that Tessa previously mentioned, and we're super excited to start work on that. They were made possible by community support and donor dollars uh, provided by people just like you guys. So big shout out to you. Thank you so much for that. In addition to the four projects that we're starting work on, we are also really close to finishing two donated easements um, by landowners in the Shasta County area. Uh, they're very generous families and they're so dedicated to their land, so I'm really excited to be able to work with them. Uh, one of the properties in particular is in the Fall River Mills area, and the Fall River Valley is really important to us uh, for conservation values. It's a very important bird area. There's all kinds of migrating birds that come through there every single year. We love to have properties that complete a corridor and allow those wildlife to use the area the way that it was intended. So we are so excited to be able to conserve more lands up there. Unfortunately, due to COVID, I haven't been able to meet most of you, but I am so excited to be able to get out and on some Wild Ways events this year and see you all out there. For many of you over the last several months, you've seen our partners of conservation. It's really exciting for us. It's our chance to actually bring you along, along the journey of conservation. So many of these projects will be coming up in the future, and you've seen it in the past through our regenerative agriculture of the crops at Daniel Beaver Banks Preserve, and more recently through the drone program. They were very, very excited. Both of them were an incredible success, and I cannot iterate how much you play a role in making sure that conservation continues across Shasta County. At the Shasta Land Trust, we believe there are so many ways you can get involved. Either you can donate, 
volunteer, offer advice on knowledge that you have across the community, or get involved in Partners of Conservation. Like I said, over the last several months, we've had some amazing programs, but that's just the beginning. We have so many future plans for you to get involved in. We want to make sure the Shasta Land Trust is everything that you want it to be. While we're here and we're operating, we're doing the conservation across the county, we're only as strong as what you help us do. Through all the support, we can't thank you enough. Well, this concludes the 18th annual Wild Ways Kickoff fundraiser. Hopefully you had a good time today. I know that we couldn't see each other in person and that does make me really sad. I love the kickoff. I love seeing everybody. I love hearing the music. I love the great food. I love talking about conservation. And I love all the memories that are made through so many years of awesome kickoff events. We're really excited for next year. We do hope again that we're able to gather and see one another all over again. But this year isn't over yet. And I really hope you've had an opportunity to look through the Wild Ways catalog, see what is available, and purchase tickets to some really special events. Also, I hope you had a chance to peruse the online auction. There are over 30 items this year that have been donated from so many amazing merchants, business leaders, and community members. Please go online, the bidding ends at 9 p.m., and make a bid. We really, really appreciate it. I know this year was not perfect. I know that this was not ideal, but hopefully we've been able to instill with you a little vision of what conservation means to the Shasta Land Trust. Please go online, see what we're all about, check out our e-news, and as always, always remember that we could not do what we do without you. Conservation is only possible through the amazing volunteers, donors, and community members that make all of this possible. So again, thank you, thank you so much, and I'll see you on trails very soon.